Hello everyone, you're welcome to another exciting moment with the champion session organized by Teacher X. We started this a few weeks ago and then we've been celebrating outstanding teachers who have recorded phenomenal feats across different spheres. Um, during the last episode, we had with us a Martina Teacher of the Year State Champion who shared with us so much about his experience um, and then we, we, learned, we learned a lot of things from him. And today again, we have someone really outstanding with us. We have someone who is going to be exposing us to a lot of depth. We're going to be learning so much from him. So ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Mr. Larry Obuntuye, a state champion, Lagos state champion, I'm correct, right? Lagos state champion for the yeah. 2021 Martina Teacher of the Year Awards. You're welcome Mr. Larry Obuntuye. It's great to have you here with us today. Thank you so much, uh, Teacher X and the quintessential teacher herself uh, for bringing me on board. I'm so, so happy to be here and I consider it uh, a privilege to be uh, on this interview. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so um, called Mr. Larry Ubuntuye, but I'm sure for me and many other people, we know him as Prof. Yes, so I'll be going with Prof sometimes, I'll be going with Mr. Larry Okunsoe, so it's still the same person I'm talking about for the audience and viewers. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Kemi Okunsoe and I work as a project manager for Teacher X. So um, we're going to get right into this session straight away. Um, so Prof, we want to know a little bit more about you. I mean, we know you already as a Martina star, as a Martina champion, but what else? We, we, we want to know more about who you are. So please share with us just briefly. Okay, um, thank you so much. Um, my name is Larry Pintoye. Um, I am popularly referred to as uh, prof, uh, but I consider myself as the inspirational teacher. Okay, so I teach science, basically chemistry. That's my, I tell my student, that's my first love. Okay, and I like to introduce myself as someone that champions the greatness of students, greatness of learners. That's basically uh, my focus and what I do uh, day in, day out, you know, in the classroom. And beyond my work within the four walls, you know, of the classroom, I'm also the uh, director of training for I teach to reach. It's an SDG4 initiative, which I you know I founded uh, in collaboration with a few other teachers, with like-minded teachers, to especially to focus on teacher training and developing the quality of teacher that we have in Nigeria and by extension, you know, uh, in Africa. So, um, Prof, we need to know, how does it feel like being a Martina champion? How, how did it feel like for you, you know, emerging as one of the finalists among maybe hundreds and even thousands of teachers that applied for this? Yes. So, how does it feel? <laughs> yeah, it, it feels great. Uh, for me, um, essentially two things. Uh, it's a feeling of reward and a reactivation of responsibility. Yeah. When I say a feeling of reward, you know, especially if you are a teacher who you know goes above and beyond to create meaningful impact and chart a new you know or new courses in your teaching profession or in the teaching you know space uh, for me it's a feeling of reward i i feel it's well deserving and especially when you meet people and say oh ah, well done that's well deserving oh, that's long overdue i mean that like this feeling of ah i think i'm being rewarded i've been appreciated and much more than uh, a feeling of reward. For me, I, I see it as, I see every winning as a responsibility. Yeah, it's a heavy responsibility. So every winning that I've gotten, I see it as a responsibility. Responsibility to do more, responsibility to chat, you know, new courses, responsibility to drive new initiative to new territories and so on and so forth. So two things are, are stand out for me responsible feeling of reward and um, a reactivation of responsibility to do more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
earlier just now really stand out for me, the feeling of reward and then a reactivation of responsibility. I mean, so for every achievement, it just means that there's more to do, there's more to achieve, there's more to work on. So that's really profound. Thank you for sharing that with us. So uh, we want to know, before now, is this your very first try at the Multina Teacher of the Year Awards, or have you been trying it previously? And um, yeah, so how did you first get to know about the Multina platform for teachers? Yes. Um. Yeah, I got to know, I think uh, that should be 2000 and when Mr. Okwerefa won the Martina Teacher of the Year. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, I got to know that. And I think that uh, having met Mr. Okwerefa after the uh, Inspirational Teacher Award, I mean, he, he was he was pushing. He sent me, go and apply to Martina Teacher of the Year, uh, but uh, somehow, I think I'm someone, I have a lot of things on my plate, like a lot on my plate that I do. And um, I, I didn't go for it at that time. And I think I responded to you and said, I, I've got a lot to do because I like to always prepare for whatever I do a lot. I, I prepare a lot. It's one of the virtues that I hold dearly you know, to my heart. I just felt that if you are going into something, you need to, to prepare me for it. So I didn't go for it. but. Uh, uh, last year, I uh, during the COVID, also I didn't go for 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 the award. But this year, I, I almost missed it. This year, I I submitted the application on the last day, very last day, 11 p.m. in the night. I just pushed the application, you know, in 11 p.m. in the night. So um, uh, it's just because I wanted to prepare. Uh, Prepare for people that have heard about it uh, for quite a while, but I was waiting for. Let's just say I felt ripe this year to just um, harvest that. Basically, that's why I went for it uh, this year. So we're really glad that it was a ripe fruit that you just plucked and then you earned. Um, at this, um, at this your very first try. So it's great to know that. Um, so next thing we want to know, um, what has changed for you between now and then? I mean, now that you became the Maltina champion for Lagos State and then previously, so is there anything that has changed for you? We know your bank account has, you know, been uplifted a lot. We know that, but we also want to know other things that have happened. Okay, you're, you're muted. Yeah, so so what has what has changed um, for for me? Uh, winning is not is not the the terminal point. It's not the it's not the ultimate. I mean, winning awards is not the ultimate. So I see winning award as um, a, a a reward for what whatever you do for excellence. That's why I see. So I've always done what I know how to do best prior to winning the award and after winning you know the award. But usually. Uh, being an award winner, um, I, I get more platform, okay, to be able to air my views with regards to education development, uh, teaching and learning space, how to facilitate teaching and learning more. People want to hear from you. I mean, it gives me a better platform. I mean, more platform, rather stronger platform to come on board like I'm here now. I mean, it's because uh, people felt that, okay, you won award or you are a champion, you won right or the other so possibly that will end you you know uh audience okay so winning award has given me better platform to be able to hear my views okay that's what has changed but with respect to uh me pursuing excellence and doing more job i've always you know, that has not changed i've been doing what i know how to do to best award or no award the pursuit of excellence is so dear to my heart and that's what i continue to do thank you all right. Winning is not the terminal point. Winning is not the terminal point. That's um, a really great statement. Every win is another step to a greater act. Okay. Now, I'm um, talking about your application. You know, um, how long did it take you to work on your application? 
That's the first question. Now, number two, there's so many teachers that see lots of opportunities out there. But sometimes some teachers have lots of fears. Some teachers feel, oh, I'm not good enough. Do I really have all of the qualifications? What can you say to teachers like that? So two questions in one. How long did it take you to work on your application? Did you get some help on it? Did you do it alone? And then what can you say to teachers that see opportunities like this? But for some reason, they're not able to put in for it. You're muted, please. Thank you. Uh, I would say it took me about two weeks to put my application together. Yes, about two weeks. Two weeks of thorough job. Like when I say two weeks, I mean two weeks. You can count all the hours in two weeks and put it to together. It, as soon as I knew I wanted to go in for this, and I, mean, I told myself, I just felt that this is the right time. This is the year I need to go for, for this. And I had to set, you know, aside adequate time to go through the application. So it took me about two weeks to, you know, go through the application. I mean, we, we, we respect to uh, maybe having a fear in my heart uh, going for the application. I, I wasn't afraid, okay? I wasn't afraid. I actually expected to win. Yes, I expected to win. I always expect to win, okay? Uh, that expectation is not a baseless one, and that's one of the things I want to point out. That expectation is, is, is found on thorough preparation. And so when preparation is thorough, uh, it's one of the things that will actually take, you know, fear away. I did my due diligence prior to the application and during the application, because doing due diligence I mean, the, the, the best diligence you could do is prior to the application. Okay, the application is just a way of putting yourself on that platform. But you can't come up on a platform where you are not dressed for it. What you do prior to the application coming you know, out is getting dressed for stepping on the platform. Submitting your application is you stepping on the platform. But you must have dressed yourself in the dressing room and from some people, that could take years, that could take months. It could even be all your years of professional, you know, journey. You have been dressing yourself, you know, for that particular day. Then submitting your application is stepping on stage. So I will say that I, I did my due diligence. For me, it, it's like a carpenter that wants to drive a sharp nail into, into a wood. And the sharp, carpenter went for a sharp nail, went for a sizable hammer, and he or she continues to hit the armor. So if you ask him, do you expect for the nail to go through the, the wood? Of course, yes, because the, the carpenter has taken a sharper nail and it has what a, a sizable, you know, armor. So by doing my due diligence, I, I, I see it as a way of putting pressure on, on the universal ecosystem to respond favorably. So if you have done your due diligence, ecosystem will respond to you favorably and that's how the, uh, the award comes. So for, for teachers who, who may have fear one form or the other, and the first thing I would say is like somebody said that fear is false evidence appearing real. But in case uh, we have one or two teachers uh, that have tangible fears, your fear is tangible, your fear is a tangible one, then the question now is what then do you do if you have a tangible fear? The first thing I would advise is you have to understand the basis of your fear. I personally see fear as the opposite of, of confidence. Though if you're afraid, it means you're not confident enough about that thing. And so most times when we don't feel confident enough, it's because either of two things. Number one is because the required you know, competence for attainment is shaky. So if the competence for you to attain that particular thing you are aiming at is shaky, then definitely you will lose the confidence and of course fear, you know, uh, will, will grip in. Okay, so I, I want to advise that um, we seek for, for the required knowledge, like you asked whether, you know, I get uh, help, you know, here and there. Okay, so I said you preparing for application is prayer too. So every day of my professional journey, I have people I speak with, I have people I look up to, I have uh, me friends who come me, who discuss, you know, like this discussion is going on, maybe somebody is listening, a teacher is watching. This is part of your preparation for the application. There are one or two things that you will hear that will motivate you, that will prepare you and help you to package yourself better. So if there's any teacher 
who is afraid of picking up one you know, application for award or the other, you need to go find what is the basis of this fear. If the basis of the fear is that your competence for attainment is shaky, then you need to go develop, comp I mean, competence, develop capacity in whatsoever area. So I, I think that the professional development is one of the things that boosts the confidence of a teacher. If you have developed capacity, whether in the teaching and learning space, you know, um, uh, develop capacity with respect to you having a, a, a solid or a workable teaching philosophy. As you go to the classroom every day, there must be a basis on which you work. There will be a basis on which you step into the classroom or step out of the classroom or do whatever you do, you know, within the classroom. So I advise teacher, one of the ways to kill fear is for you to develop competence and competence will boost your confidence. And secondly, we have a lot of teachers who, who are even competent. They are competent, but they lack belief in themselves. So the little things that you do that you consider little, that may be something that somebody on the interview panel want to listen to. Yeah, and sometimes the big shots, people who do a whole lot may not even win their award because he or she does not bring to the fore the things he or she does because he felt that these things are, they can't reckon with these. So if I want to step up and it's forced to believe in myself, it is that confidence that I exhume on the platform and the people interview you will see that confidence and they will also, you know, be able to catch the code of that confidence. So advise every teacher, all the activities that you go through, the things you do in the classroom, believe that there's something, someone out there want to see, want to hear about, and you never can tell, you know, uh, as you prepare for that, your, your day will come. And also, I think that every teacher out there who wants to put, you know, in for one form of application for award or the other, you need to consider the, the attitudes of champions. I, I'll give an example. I know Olaleko uh, Adeko um, has won several awards, but this young man is still moving up and down, not seeking a word, but doing his due diligence exercising his influence of excellence on the things that he does. So the attitude of champion is that champions do not run after awards. You know, awards are rewarding response to the punches of impact that champions, you know, uh, make. Do not run, you know, after awards. Running after awards could create fear, could keep, create anxiety, you know, left and right. But you keep doing what you need to do. Keep, you know, the pursuit of, of impact and, and excellence is, for I, I see it as a heavy weight that would command the ecosystem to award you. So if all these things are in place, definitely the fear will be out of the way and you'll be confident enough to step you know, uh, forward to apply for whatever award you want to apply for. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. That's so much. I'm taking notes and I already have like one page almost, you know, filled up from all you've been saying. Um, if there's one thing you just mentioned now that all the other champions we've interviewed have also emphasized, it's professional development, capacity development for teachers, which is really important. Um, he also made a statement, he said, competence boosts confidence. I mean, for every teacher listening to this right now, that's something you should really hold on to. Competence boosts confidence. You want to apply for opportunities, you must be competent, okay? He also talked about believing in your experiences. And then I think I should also add the place of documenting your experiences as a teacher, documenting, you know, the things you're achieving in your classroom. So thank you very much, Prof. So moving forward now, so I think I, I'm not sure I've asked this question, but how long have you been teaching? Wow. Um, I took my first teaching job, 1999. That's my first teaching job. That's prior to uh, entry into the university. And so I was put all my experience together. Uh, I think I should have about 20 years of teaching experience. Yeah, this is actually my 21st year in the classroom. Yeah, 21st year. So I've been teaching before, you know, I went to university and after university, even during the university days, uh, it's been teaching, you know, all the way. Okay. Wow, that's, that's 
two decades of teaching. That's really amazing, Prof. Really, really amazing. Um, so the next question would be, why did you really decide to become a teacher? Why did you decide to go into it you know, fully as a career? Yes, I mean, so many teachers have lots of questions, lots of doubts before setting out. So what is it for you? What was the motivation for you? You're muted, sir. So initially, I actually did not consciously, you know, choose to become a teacher, at least uh, at, the, at the pre, um, or let me say at the secondary or pre-university, pre-tertiary stage. Okay, but I've always wanted to be either of two things, be a medical doctor or be a lecturer. And even when I went to, to study biochemistry, I always wanted to go back, you know, to, to College of Medicine, and, and study medicine. And even at that, I wasn't preparing to um, to be in the hospital. I would have, if I had studied medicine, I would have ended up in the university, say, teaching, you know, uh, a medical, medical student. But along the line, maybe I was influenced by my uncle. I grew up with my uncle, uh, Mr. Guntui, he's a very powerful uh, mathematics and geography teacher. So I've lived in teacher's quarters all my years. I remember a particular day in university, Professor Manoma was, Manoma was asking uh, the whole class who wants to be, you know, a lecturer. I, I somehow just raised up my hand. And by the time I look back, I was the only one in a class of about 110, you know, uh, my set then. So I brought down my hand uh, and, you know, done. So I, I want to say that I think teaching found me I actually didn't um, consciously want to teach at the, the secondary level. I always wanted to uh, be a lecturer or be, you know, in the medical field. Even after my, uh, I still went back to College of Medicine. I uh, there about to take my postgraduate program. As at 2012, for you to know how much I pursued uh, that, even after finishing, I, I wanted to go straight into uh, uh, lecturing, but I had to do my PhD and all that. So based on logistics, it wasn't working. And so, but something happened why I decided to stay back in the classroom. I see a whole lot of rot in the education system. I see uh, being in the classroom for almost 15 years back then, I, I knew I had to stay to create a change. I knew I had to stay to create an impact, enough of complaining about it. So I made up my mind. It was, it was, at that point, it became a conscious effort. I had to sit myself down. You have been in this space for so long and you are making plans to move out. Now, do you want to stay or not? And so I had to do several evaluation. I sat myself down, evaluated myself. I said, okay, I think I can create an impact. That's where the journey of impact actually began. I, I can create an impact in this space. I said, okay, I have to stay back. It was then, even after having taught for 15 years, I had no teaching qualification. I had to go back for my PGD, you know, uh, in education because I've, I've resolved in my mind that this is the space I want to stay. And I, do, I don't just want to be a fly on the wall in that space. I want to create impact. And so I now accepted the proposal that teaching, teaching to me, teaching came like a handsome man looking for, you know, a princess to marry. So I was the pr princess that teaching, you know, uh, hooked. And I think the teaching did a good job of hooking me. So I accepted the proposal after due consideration. And so I stayed back. And what made me stay back because I saw that there are a lot of holes I could feel with my impact. So it is that drive to create impact that actually made me stay in the teaching profession. And I want to say, I think it has been of so far so, so good. I am loving it. I'm loving it so much. I am not regretting uh, uh, being in the teaching space. I mean, I'm planning uh, in the next uh, few years, I want to celebrate my 25 years in the classroom in a very mighty, you know, and, and, and big, big way. You know, so I, I think it, it, it's paid, paid off. So along the line, it may not have been a conscious effort initially, but now I made a conscious effort to, to stay. And I'm going all the way, you know, uh, into the teaching uh, uh, profession, getting the necessary qualification, you know, uh, that, that I require even up to a doctorate degree in education, which I'm presently embarking on, for you to know how much I have 
totally surrender to the love of teaching. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, it's interesting, Prof. I feel like the analogy you gave about you know teaching, like as you know, a man looking for a princess to you know to marry. That's like a very interesting analogy. Um, Prof also emphasized self-revaluation as a key factor for growth. So I mean, every teacher listening to this right now, constant self-revaluation is totally important. Um, to move on, Prof. What do you think should be the three top characteristics of an effective teacher? Well, uh, or maybe one. I should rephrase the question, three top characteristics or skills that should be possessed by an effective teacher? Yes, but um, number one, I think an effective teacher should be teachable. Yeah, teacher, we as teachers would need to be a life long learner, lifelong learner. Teachability, uh, it's, it's a trait and it's also a skill that you practice, especially if you are someone on the intelligent side, you may want to think that you have arrived, you don't need nobody else, you don't need to listen, so you need to practice, that's why it becomes a skill. It's a skill that you practice and the more you practice teachability, you get better, you know, at it. And secondly, another trait for me, for a, a, a a good teacher, a great teacher, positivity is very important. Positivity. I like to listen to the bio, I mean, to read biography, you know, of great men, and even listen to a lot of interviews. But yesterday, uh, it was amazing. I was listening to it. I listened to interview of two two artists, uh, Davido and and Whiskey. I mean, amazingly teacher. Anyway, so on the side, and the things. In fact, Davido said when he was interviewed that his French teacher told him he will never make it. He go to Google and he said he, said he will never make it. And, he's, he, and he, he, was, he was so happy um, now that he, he made it. He mentioned the name of his school, and I, I don't know how the, the teacher will be feeling. I mentioned the name of the school, he mentioned the year. So I think for me, positivity, it's a trait for a teacher that will be a great teacher. We need to approach the classroom with that attitude of positivity every day. Positivity sharpens your discernment. When you see a learner, it is that positivity that helps to discern what does this child need? How can this child get better? So for me, uh, uh, positivity is a, is a very fantastic trait that a teacher needs to have apart from being teachable. And of course, that will lead to a teacher being caring. You know, we need the learners that we are teaching now they will care about what we want to teach if they know that we care about them. So every teacher needs to be caring. Every teacher needs to be positive. Every teacher needs to have you know, a teachable you know, mindset for us to become great teacher, not just teacher, not just ordinary teacher. I'm talking about teachers that will create impact every now and then. Teachers that see it as a responsibility, personal responsibility, professional responsibility, national responsibility to champion the greatness of learners every single day. Thank you. I think these three traits are, are, are key for me. All right. Um, thank you, Prof. Being teachable, um, positivity, and then, you know, being caring. So every teacher should really possess these skills. They are even there. Um... OK, sorry about that. So every teacher should really possess these skills. Um, we're going to be moving on really fast now. In recent times in the Nigerian education space, there have been several challenges from bullying, you know, students assaulting students, students assaulting teachers, and several other challenges. In your own opinion, what do you think is um, one challenge to the education sector? And then how do you think this can be solved or this can be addressed? Okay, um, so to get the question right, um, the education sector as a, as a whole, or, um, okay, yeah, so whether the education sector as a whole, we have a lot of you know, issues that you have raised, um, issues happening with students or with teachers. Um, for me, I think no education will rise above the quality of its teachers. No education system will rise above the quality of the teacher. For me, that's a key starting point. If we want students to attain 
qualitative education, then we must focus on the issue of teacher quality. That is like the center of gravity of, of everything. I mean, in 1966, the, the uh, International Labor Organization in partnership with UNESCO you know, came up with recommendation concerning the status of the teachers. I mean, worldwide, a very fantastic and robust document. And that document covers every, I mean, virtually every aspect of, of education, of the teaching and learning profession, uh, which includes the initial, you know, and continued training for teacher recruitment, uh, talk about advancement and promotion, which will take care of the aspect of teacher remuneration, teacher not, in, not wanting to stay in the profession because they are perceived as poor, you know, talk about dis disciplinary, you know, procedure within the education system for teachers and setting up disciplinary procedure, you know, uh, um, for, for, for school, whether it's private or, or public school, the responsibility and the right of the teacher, this document, you know, uh, took, you know, uh, care of that, how teachers can participate in education decision making, everything stated, this is talking about teacher status. As of 1966, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how many teachers have, you know, access to, to that document. It's available, you know, online. So if our education system is ever going to get to the zenith that we, 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 we admire, the zenith that we expect, the issue of teacher quality and teacher qualification needs to be you know brought to the front burner i think as a nation now so let's leave international labor organization unesco out of it now as a nation we need to sit down and say do we have as a nation as nigeria you know a concrete status in terms of teacher quality that we want for every single teacher you know in nigeria if you look at every, you know, uh, in our present society, look at, you know, um, every other profession, for example, let me take the accounting profession uh, as, uh, as, as an example, in terms of quality of accountant. You can come out with a BSc in accounting and you you say you, you, are, you are a chartered accountant or you are an accountant, so to say. You need to go through specified, agreed on body of knowledge such that when you are passed through it, you will be said or called a chartered word accountant. And anyone, if you gather 10, 100 chartered accountants, you can almost employ any one of them because you are sure that every one of them have gone through a specified, now talking about teacher qualification and status now, an agreed upon specified body of knowledge. As saying, this is a huge responsibility. They have done well so far, done well so far. But I think when they, in terms of teacher registration, they have done a whole lot. So I think TRC needs to step up, I mean, higher, rather than just being a, a, a registration body for teacher. I mean, if I go through the TRC, you know, uh, mandate, it includes, you know, qualifying teacher. But the question is, what is the body of knowledge? What are the modules that is in place? That if you have gone through this module, somebody now becomes a you know, attain a qualified teacher teacher rather than it just being you know a registration uh, uh, body alone, a body that are actually certified and qualified teachers. And we need to go back to, to uh, our in-service you know, training. How do we recruit people into you know the, the education? Uh, you know, and, and we all know how it is. Well, through school, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a motivating thing for for someone to say I am in the education you know faculty. I mean, people want to just yeah. be silent about it because they are not proud enough of of what the the outcome at the end of the day might be. So I think that the best of our brains, the best of our brains, need to be recruited right from the undergraduate level into the education you know faculty. Education faculty should be getting people who score the highest in jam should be the one. See, I, I would say this is very key. Intelligence. It's one of the traits of an effective teacher. Intelligence is very key. But I think at that level of recruitment, if you go to jam, people who go to who are pushed, I will use the word push into the education, will feel that yeah. if you are, if you don't have enough you know, points, they'll say will you study education? No, it's it should be the other way around. People go to because you are coming to teach others, you should have the highest point. 
intelligence is very, very, very key. So we need to get it right at that point. But no one wants to go. Someone that gets the highest point in jump, who does not want to be a teacher, will not be attracted to want to go to the education faculty. So what are the attractions do we have? What attraction do we have in place? What attraction would the government put in place? Do we have scholarship or full scholarship for somebody who wants to do education that will motivate people to come in? Full fledged scholarship because these people are, be, are coming out to be nation builders in their own right. Every teacher, every teacher, every day steps into the classroom. He or she is faced with nations that he or she is building. He or she is, you know, is raising up. So are there free scholarship for people who are coming? You know, into uh, the education department from start to finish. Maybe that will motivate you know the best of brain to want to come in. And I think that's one of the things that the uh, Teach for Nigeria program is 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 based on. Even though it is more like like an uh, uh, not, it's more like uh, an in-service kind of thing. People who are not even who have not even done teaching before, who have no flair for teaching, they have a way of attracting best of the mind. They expose them to the opportunities in the teaching profession. They expose them to, I mean, if you look at their logo, they say teach, impact, and lead or something. I mean, those captions exactly will cap capture the heart of someone who is a best brain, whether in the medical field, the account field. I mean, we have people from various fields who came in to teach, you know, uh, uh, for Nigeria because the profession was presented in, you know, in a brilliant, you know, an attractive way for them. So I think if we get it right from bringing teacher in into the profession, uh, this will work well. Okay, thank <laughs> you so much, Prof. You said so much on um, teacher quality. I mean, that, 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 that's a real um, point that should be improved on in the Nigerian education space. So um, we'll be um, concluding the session in the next two to three three minutes but we want to know so um right now you're the lagos state multi teacher of the year champion what next should, should we be expecting from prof what next what else are you um what, what other career goals are you looking forward to achieving within the next three to five years so just in one minute please you're muted prof yeah, in the next three to five years, my next uh, level of focus is developing cap my capacity to be able to enter fully into education, policy making and advocacy. And I know that just being, being in the classroom is a huge thing. I mean, but my impact will be limited if I stay within the classroom. I need to step out. I need to sit on that table where policy have been made. And that's one of the things that drive me into taking up in a challenge to to start my doctorate in education, uh, the educational leadership degree. Uh, I think I'm in my first year. And uh, the next three to four years, I should uh, have finished up, you know, that's been a doctor of education. And that's one of the things I'm doing for me to have capacity to, to enter into fully education uh, advocacy and policy making. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for today's session. You shared so much with us, and I'm very sure um, all of our viewers have also learned so much from you. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Uh, we're really grateful on behalf of the Directorate of Teacher X. I'm yet to say thank you so much once again. So this brings us to the end of today's session. Thank you. Very thank much. you for having me. It's a pleasure.